<laughs> Greetings, mammalians. Welcome to Wall Street Wildlife. The investing podcast that will better help you understand how to make money in the stock market. I'm Christoph Monkey Pikarski. And I'm a very happy new year, Luke the Badger Hallard. Today is December the 27th. But this is going to go out on January the 2nd. So, hey, we're just jumping on the bandwagon. This week, we're going to make all of our predictions for 2024. What doom and gloom and crazy things are going to happen in the world of big tech, small tech, macro world events? What do we think? We're probably going to be way off base. Um, but let's see what we think. And then we'll come back and we'll review this uh, at the end of 2024 if our podcast is still intact. Fingers crossed. <laughs> That's right. I expect us to be fully wrong about every single answer. But I do expect uh, Wall Street Wildlife to keep its rocket-like trajectory in popularity going. So not only will we still be here in the year, we're, we're going to take over the, the interwebs as far as the current data suggests, right? Let's hope so. With our uh, loyal subscribers' help, hit that like and subscribe and uh, tell your friends. And if you think any of our predictions today are complete garbage and you disagree, <laughs> hook up with us on X and let us know. Uh, yeah. Uh, so shall we jump, jump in, Badger? Let's do that. Let's, uh, let's get stuck straight into it. So we're going to do a couple of macro uh, predictions to get us started. Then we've got a few related to big tech. I'm looking forward to uh, talking about Tesla versus an interesting up-and-comer. Um, and then we're going to get into all the rest. But there's at least one there I'm looking forward to digging the elbow into you on, which is your favorite, EOS. <laughs> okay, yes, I can't, I can't wait. So category number one is what do we predict, which country do we predict will have the highest GDP growth rate in 2024? Badger, what do you got for this one? Uh, I'm going to go with a tried and tested uh, view, which is not going to be correct, but I just really like the trajectory of, you know what I'm going to say, I'm going to say India, because we had a fantastic interview about six months ago, uh, which told us some really interesting things as part of the Seven Investing No Limit podcast about demographics there. I'm not going to go on about it again today, but I think India are going to see exceptional GDP growth in 2024. That too is my answer. But here, here's the thing. Uh, I, I was looking for alternatives. You know, I, I, was, I was really poking around and trying to uh, break the thesis, and I can't. I mean, I mean it, it, obviously, it's going to be wrong because the odds are against it being right, but I just can't find a more compelling case than India. However, I did find a fascinating, uh, a fascinating data point that I did not know about. One of my favorite travel adventures in my life was going to Mozambique, Africa. Hmm. And I loved it in part because one of my favorite songs is a Dylan song uh, called Mozambique from the Desire album. But anyhow, it's, uh, it had one of the highest GDP growth rates in 2023. And that's a very uh, decimated country from a long time civil war. And it's got lots of issues. But I was like, oh, wow, cool. They're uh, at the top of the list. So my backup horse in the race is Mozambique, Africa. Well, if we get a backup, uh, then my backup horse in the race is the Special Administrative Republic of Macau. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> that did incredible GDP growth. It's a tiny little place. I've been there a ton of times. When I lived in Hong Kong, I was out there every other weekend playing poker. Uh, like the, the, the volume of, of revenues and sort of gambling that goes through Macau casinos dwarfs Las Vegas uh, these oh, wow. days. Yeah, and it's suddenly where the biggest poker games in the world are being played in Macau. A, a materially smaller base than India, for sure. But uh, if we look at percentage terms, that's my backup. Do I sniff a upcoming uh, field trip, research trip to <laughs> Wall Street Wildlife to, to Macau? Definitely not. It is soulless. <laughs> there could be there could be an up and coming Wall Street Wildlife trip to another gambling capital somewhere else in the world. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> uh, Badger and Monkey are up to no good. <clears throat> we are. 
All right, Badger, let's talk about interest rates for 2024. My God, I had a hard time with this one. Well, what would you come up with? No, go on, you go first. I went okay. first and laughing. So I do not know whether interest rates are going to drop close to 0% again out of, oops, the system is already broken, or we're going to go the other direction to – uh, the hyperinflation. So my final answer is that interest rates by the end of 24 will be around 6%. Mm. That they're going to go higher rather than lower. Okay, interesting. Well, I'm, I think I'm with one exception, which I'm going to tackle perhaps more on the next prediction. I'm going to stick to the Fed's forecast, which is broadly 4.5% by the end of 2024. So the the average of the dot plot where the FOMC members believe interest rates going to end up. But there is, a, there is a wild card. I'll hold it. There is a wild card in my next prediction that if that happens, all bets are off. I have no idea where we end up. Could get very, very ugly. Interesting. That's, I have, so this is our next category is the black swan, right? Mm. And I, I, I mean, obviously black swans are black for, for a reason. I, I have an intuition. I know what you're going to say. Or, well, I wonder if this is, if, if, if monkey and badger are more alike than different. <laughs> I really hope you haven't made the same prediction as me because mine, this is, this is doom and gloom. Uh, okay. Well, uh, you want to go for it? Yeah. I mean, I, if, if I had to vote for any of my predictions to be wrong, like this is the one, um, I fear that we might see tactical nuclear weapons used in either um russia ukraine conflict or in the middle east and if that happens god knows where the world ends up oh wow okay you did go uh you did go dark uh in the, <laughs> in the darkest way possible i uh was thinking taiwan okay which right. might end up with a similar outcome but assuming that that isn't the end game but an invasion of China, an invasion of Taiwan by China would obviously wreck massive havoc. I do have a back. I do have a backup Swan event. I just want to quickly mention. Make it a nice one. Come on, please give, um, us, give us a give us a happy. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't help but thinking that the U.S. election in 2024. I'm assuming it's going to be Biden versus Trump, but but that's not even known for sure. But given the, the chaos that is Trump in all the ways, I have no idea what to think. And and some real upheaval in the United States around the election could cause serious ripples in yeah. unknown ways. I, I, I thought of that, and I just thought I won't go there on politics. I've got some views, some fairly strongly held views, but probably not for the podcast. Um, there's probably, to be honest, there's probably no good outcome from the uh, the U.S. election. It's just a, it's a like a shit show of bad choices, basically. <laughs> yeah, it, it could be a mess. I mean, we're talking yeah. about you know the integrity of the U.S. government and that that's on the bingo card for potentially being disrupted in whatever way. Yeah, so yeah. we shall see. Cool. So look, hopefully we got the doom and gloom out of the way. That was our macro predictions. Doesn't seem like either of us are particularly optimistic about 2024. Um, but we're going to come on to big tech next. We've got a couple of hopefully slightly more lighthearted fun predictions. Uh, let's see, though. You can go first. So uh, we're going to start by talking about The Magnificent Seven, which is not uh, a famous Yul Brynner movie. It's the uh, seven powerhouse stocks that have really driven... Um, well, the indexes in the last year or so. Let's just quickly list out who they are. And our prediction question is, uh, which of the seven will most outperform or underperform? I guess we're talking about market cap percentage change of, over the course of 2024. But if you don't know, the Magnificent Seven, I think, are Alphabet, Amazon, Apple, Meta, Microsoft, NVIDIA, and Tesla. A magnificent collection there. Oh, man, uh, this was a hard one, but I'm going to default to Tesla and only because they have that combination of AI, energy storage, and 
electric vehicles. And I don't know to what ratio each will power the other, but my bet is still on AI and energy storage to a large degree. So when in doubt, um, because I think in the end, this will be the world's most valuable company eventually. Uh, I mean, it's a pretty, pretty expensive company today. It's uh, $800 million. So, you, so actually, the, actually, on a market cap basis, the cheapest of the seven. So actually, no, good shout. Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, for my outperformer, I really wanted to go Microsoft, actually. But in the end, I didn't. But let me tell you why I was thinking Microsoft, and that will tell. That will lead me to explaining why I picked somebody else. This is a world where, in a recessionary environment, if money gets tight, companies today are going to double down on the vendors they already have, and they're going to be, you know, looking to get rid of things like Zoom and stuff like that, and they'll be looking to double down and get value from the stuff they own. And virtually every business owns Microsoft and Microsoft Office and Teams and that suite of products. And, um, you know, there have been questions about their acquisition of OpenAI, but they're integrating that stuff in a really nice way into their product set. I think that's just going to make it an even more valuable set of uh, tools and capabilities, plus Azure and everything else. So I quite like Microsoft. But in the end, valuation put me off them because their second most expensive company out of the lot, $2.7 trillion, just behind Apple, so for all those reasons, um, I'm going with Google Alphabet as my biggest grower. And that makes me happy because that's one of the biggest positions in my personal portfolio. I'll be very happy to see them accelerate from what seems like a bargain stock valuation today of uh, $1.78 trillion. Pick up Google for less than $2 trillion seems like a steal. Yeah, that that makes sense. I was thinking about a little bit of the advertising tailwinds to go into 2024, but my bearish outfit made made it impossible to pick Google. So I'm going with what I think is the the, the biggest uh, tailwind of all AI and and energy. So, but I see your reasoning. So I, I think we could. I mean, a, a legitimate case could be made for all of these companies out of all of the magnificent seven. I don't think any of them would completely surprise me as the winner. Mm. I mean, these are arguably seven of the strongest companies in the world today, right? You're expecting them all to do pretty well. Right. So I guess that's not saying anything interesting, but yeah. <laughs> but we did. Right. Did, you, uh, did you make a prediction on the weakest performer of the seven? I did not. I did I've not. Got one. I think you'll probably agree with me. Let me make my one. So actually, I'm going to caveat this by still saying I own this and I think it's a buy at today's valuation. But my biggest underperformer of the seven is NVIDIA, I'm afraid. Um, Like, it's an expensive stock, but there is just a ton built into that valuation, which, you know, has been driven by incredible results. But if they fail to meet these ever-increasing expectations, even one quarter, then... There's a lot of downside, perhaps, built into the valuation right now. Plus, everybody else is out there developing their own chips. You know, that's always been a kind of background concern. Plus, you know, maybe GPUs aren't the far future of AI. Maybe there's other ways of accelerating. So, yeah, I like this. It's in my portfolio. It's one of my higher conviction stocks, but possibly it's going to be the weaker of the seven for me. Yeah, that makes sense. I really wanted to go meta, but actually, yeah, I thought that's what I thought you might say. Yeah, yeah. But I actually one quick side note about about meta. Uh, I I know people are in this moment bearish about the metaverse. Hmm. I am not, and I think some of the previews that that I've seen. Make, make it sound like the technology itself will be another leap forward to how humans interact and and that the real product is, is as far as I could tell, beyond what we not having yet experienced it, it's going to offer us, yeah, I, I guess a revolutionary way to communicate that kind of like the pre-internet, post-internet era. And so I know Meta is the, the leader in that space. So I would not count them out for that reason itself. Yeah, I buy that. I buy that. I, I don't think we'll see that 
being anything significant from a revenue perspective in 2024, but long term, uh, you know, somewhere either they or Apple or somewhere in that space, we're going to start seeing, um, as you say, that revolution. But yeah. like, I, I don't really like the company, if I'm honest, Meta, but the, they seem to be on a bit of a charge right now. And, um, you know, just their advertising business is just fantastic for them. Plus, they've got a whole bunch of really interesting, like they're not lauded as an AI player, but they're doing some incredible things in AI around like science research and other stuff. Yeah, so that might be a 2025 pick. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Yeah. Uh, speaking of getting, our, getting ahead of ourselves, Tesla versus BYD. Ooh, yeah, BYD, Build Your Dreams, the uh, Chinese auto manufacturer. Well, who'd you go with? Uh, oh, the, the, the setup here, uh, apologies. The setup is which of these two will have a higher, re uh, higher revenue? Yeah, higher revenues by the end of 2024. Uh, I'm going BYD. I think BYD are going to pit them. I kind of thought, given the, the, the you said that you came up with this question, I, I'm going with Tesla. What's your rationale for BYD? Um, so if we're looking at global revenues, like global auto sales, um, so here's my, here's my, if you look at actually, just look at the trajectory of revenues, right? Tesla are only just outselling BYD today, something like $96 billion versus $82 billion um, on a trailing 12 month basis. And from that slightly bit lower, but essentially the same revenue base, BYD uh, revenues are growing faster um, at 31% um, quarterly year over year growth versus 9%. So I do think they probably are going to pass them by the end of next year, but long term, my money's on Tesla, um, but you know maybe Cybertruck. I don't know if that's going to be material. If that's just going to be a bit of a distraction for 2024. They've got some incredible stuff in the pipeline, but nothing that's really going to. You know, we're not going to have like Transformers and Autobots in our house in the next year, right? But mm -hmm. some stuff like that. And I don't. I don't care if Musk makes another prediction about autonomous driving. Like that's not going to come true in 2024. Um, so all these, all these lovely future revenue streams that I'm sure Kathy Wood is a huge fan of. I don't think they're going to be material in 2024, but they will be one day. But BYD is my bet for next year. Okay. Uh, and I think uh, the energy, the energy revenue will, will be enough to support the ever expanding electric vehicle tidal wave and Tesla makes the best electric vehicles in the world. So my thesis is pretty straightforward on this one. Hey, let me let me uh, back this up with some anecdotal comments as well, because uh, I've got an aging Tesla on the driveway, uh, one of the first Model 3s that was in the UK in 2019. I'm replacing it in 2024, um, and I was planning to test drive the BYD Seal, I think it's sort of their equivalent car, but in the end I've just gone, screw it, I'm just going to get another Tesla Model 3. I, I can't be asked to even bother test driving the damn thing. Oh, right. it's, it's more expensive, and the... Uh, the, the specs perhaps aren't quite as attractive. And hey, maybe Tesla do figure out autopilot, I and mean, I'd love to pay for right. it again one day if they do crack it. Well, I, I mean, uh, I, my Tesla has the uh, autopilot, and uh, so I've been using it for the last, I guess, full year. It's been a full year. And, you know, when it works, it's absolutely astounding. It's just that the 1%, it doesn't, it, you know, you can't ever relax. but but it is one of the most mind-blowing technologies that I've ever seen. And so it, it's, uh, it's garbage in the UK because, because of regulations, not because of the technology. Uh, but okay. It's, it's, okay. It's a gimmick. It's, it's a barely functional gimmick in the UK, if I'm honest. All right. So uh, the next topic is major news event in tech. What's the, what are you predicting? I've got, I've got something, I've got, I've got an idea and I didn't know which way to go on it, whether I should go with, uh, so, right, so the idea is around the regulation of big tech, because we've seen a couple of headline news stories in the last couple of weeks, uh, Adobe and Figma cancelling their acquisition. Microsoft, I think, acquired um, uh, Activision Blizzard, but now the um, FTC have raised an, a post-acquisition legal case again to challenge that, so they're going to try and unwind that acquisition. So I didn't know whether to go with like a complete overhaul of the regulatory bodies 
or a doubling down. And actually, when I did a bit of deeper research, it seems that, and I suppose I'm focusing on the FTC here, the US regulator, but um, you know, it's, it's all the other regulators too, the Competition Markets Authority in the UK and European regulators. Um, but the, if we just look at the FTC, they, they seem to have, the popular view is they seem to have, uh, they've become a bit toothless and they're taking you know, loads of spurious actions against technology companies and they're being quite ineffective. But actually, it would seem that they're actually taking fewer enforcement actions in 2022, 2023 than they have done on average. Um, and so, but they're focusing on headline ones. And if we look at what just happened in the courts with Google and Epic Games or Alphabet and Epic Games, um, it would seem that the courts are perhaps siding with um, or against the big tech platforms. So here's my, I've waffled a bit there, here's my specific prediction that we will see a major unwinding of app store dominance from Alphabet and Apple. And I don't think it will happen in 2024, but at some point in the next few years, we'll probably see that leading to those companies divesting their app stores and spinning them out as separate companies to have a bit of sort of arm's length in app store versus like owning the app store versus having apps in the app store because that's kind of a concern that you um favor your own stuff and that you exploit everybody else and charge them way too much money mm -hmm. wow yeah that's a tangled tangled mess it's been going on for quite some time i know uh i did some research about this when i was studying the metaverse and the conclusion i came to is like yeah there's so much at stake and uh, I just don't, yeah, I don't have enough uh, understanding of all the, it seems like the lesson for me from the wire is you follow the money and the players that have the most money end up somehow one way or another controlling the landscape and it's been true thus far. So it'd be quite an event if what you just said comes to pass. My prediction is maybe, well, it's not, I don't know if it's obvious, but I don't think it'll actually happen but I think it's the direction that I'm pointing to. And that is that uh, AGI, artificial general intelligence, the, the big mama, big papa of AI will arrive much sooner than we think. And so I'm not saying it'll be next year. I really highly doubt that would be the case, but I'm employing the, the, the concept that exponential growth it happens way faster than we think and that we're already on that curve and based on the saga that came to pass with open ai my conclusion from all of that was that the genie is out of the bottle and once the genie is out of the bottle there are no longer i mean you're going to have these squabbles you're going to have these public uh security warnings and but in the end, it's, it's a matter of when rather than if. And we were already surprised last year, I think it was last November at, right? We're about a year, we're over a year since what I think of as the arrival of the spaceship AI for real in a way that is in everybody's home. So a year from now, the capacity, so let me fine tune this prediction. AI's capacities will be far beyond what we think they could be today. And we'll get to that in one of these future uh, predictions at the end of the show. All right. I, I, I think I buy that, but I'm not sure about end of 2024. I don't think anyone will have definitively said, yes, AGI is here. Like there's something that's human level intelligence, general intelligence, but big prediction. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> right. I hope not, but I don't think yeah. we're prepared for it, but yeah. Well, I guess we're about halfway through our predictions. Should we do a quick reminder about how you can help us? If you're out there listening, maybe you're on the podcasts, go find us on the YouTubes, because that's the one we're really trying to get behind. We'll have loads of pretty pictures on the YouTube for this episode. I'll chuck a couple of graphs up there if you're not uh, watching what's going on. And uh, go subscribe, go check out the episode. If you think our predictions are garbage, drop us a comment. We had a nice comment uh, just yesterday on our interview episode with Dan. If you didn't catch episode seven, um, I interviewed a buddy, Dan, who
who unfortunately was scammed out of £10,000, lost all of his savings in an investment scam. Go check that one out. I think there's a bunch of red flags in there, particularly if you're a newer investor. Maybe that's one worth sending to a buddy who's just getting their feet wet in the investing pool. Yeah, what was the nice comment, Badger? Uh, yeah, we had a nice comment um, from Pierre Pada saying, good that you're addressing scams that exist in abundance out there. But Pierre also had a bit of a ribbing for you. Uh, sorry, monkey, but when you said you doubled up on Coherus, I laughed so much I cried. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we certainly don't uh, encourage tears on Wall Street wildlife, so perhaps today's 30% gain in Coherence might alleviate some of those uh, those tears. <laughs> Superb. <laughs> right, good to hear. Some, some a victory right. by year end. Fantastic. We're not going to do a uh, King of the Jungle update today, but I'll look forward to doing that in for our 9th of January episode. Let's see if Christoph's taken the lead. Okay, so next category is what will be the best performing stock in the S&P 500 in the year 2024? Mm -hmm. This year, I believe the winner looks to probably be NVIDIA. Is that, did I remember? Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's correct. correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going with, uh, I, I'm going with a company that is not in the S&P 500 yet, so I have no idea if the, this this is completely me pulling nonsense out of my butt. I'm going with I'm going with Block, aka Square. Okay. <laughs> Look at it. if you just saw Badger falling out of or his tree or whatever wherever Badger's. Like, I don't even know. That ain't that ain't uh, happening. I'll, tell, I'll and, have a real money bet with you on that one. <laughs> and the reason is you'll hear more. You'll hear Monkey talking a lot more about this. Is that I think 2020 will be the year where web 3.0 and bitcoin and the crypto stuff comes back and as far as a, a company that is kind of at its core oriented around bitcoin with somebody who knows what they're doing that is block and so when when that whole thing happens all fundamentals are off the table and so i'm going wild with with block for oh, that is indeed a wild prediction i used to own square slash block i no longer do like the d decision making of leadership uh is just completely baffling to me yeah what's your pick oh god i've gone back to the doom and gloom oh, i really wanted to go with uh my king of the jungle pick from last week actually axon enterprise and they did great uh, they they were up there in the top 10 compounders for last year but actually, my, when I put my doom and gloom hat on, probably the sector that's going to deliver the best investor returns, if things go sideways, will be a company like Lockheed Martin. They've kind of, the stock price has languished a little bit, but with recent bad news of what's happening in the world, geopolitics, um, it's taking a bit of a run up. I guess governments are expecting to spend more money on defense, rightly so. Um, and companies like Lockheed and L3 Harris and their like are set to benefit from that. And if you are, I am actually am a Lockheed Martin investor. If you are, you know, you don't just get the market cap appreciation. You also get a pretty tasty 2.7% dividend yield. So I don't think you're going to be unhappy owning that one other than if the thesis really comes true and um, we're all screwed, in which case uh, you're the richest man in the graveyard. Yeah. Well, as monkeys and badgers, sometimes we look at these humanoids and we cry <laughs> because, you know, life, life doesn't have to end with a nuclear cloud. You could just, you know, gather your bananas. You could forage for whatever badgers eat. I don't <laughs> They eat monkeys. They eat monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know if that's true, you know, instead of like using big brains to find ways to, to you know, kill the only um, floating rock that, that has oxygen in that atmosphere. Anyway, um, if you're a human listening to this, knock it off. Make sure that Lockheed and Martin doesn't become the top performing stock of 2024. Yep. Okay. Next category broken thesis make a wild prediction on a major company failure for 2024 
What did you get? I hate not to be original, but this is, I mean, we already, you already addressed this, so I won't be long winded. If Taiwan comes to pass to any extent, uh, I think NVIDIA is in real trouble. And I, I want to say something that is counterintuitive to what I said before, or maybe even contradictory, not counterintuitive. I fully, fully believe that the AI uh, tailwind will continue. And I also fully believe in NVIDIA's overall market dominance because of the many layers at which they, they are excelling. No one's going to catch them. But if there's a bubble, it's the AI bubble. And that bubble right now feels extraordinarily precarious. And it could be something as simple as uh, what I would call saturation of the, of the GPUs needed to be, so to speak, good enough. If we get a recession in there and all these, it just does not seem hard to see why, why NVIDIA could, could fall 50% or more. Already, yeah, that's uh, that is that is consistent indeed. I I thought about something similar, and I thought I'll just go in a totally different direction with this one. So I've kind of gamed this a little bit because my prediction is more of like a phoenix from the flames, perhaps depending on how you look at corporate governance. Um, like we know, WeWork, the Adam Newman company, is failing. Right, they've just declared bankruptcy, and they're you know they're doomed with all of these terrible, unprofitable leases, long term leases they got on buildings, but. Like maybe this is all that that business model's time. Shared office space, hybrid working is here for, here to stay, undoubtedly now. Like we're long past the pandemic, and many companies in the developed world are still largely hybrid working, and so having flexible office space makes a ton of sense. Um, so maybe I've so, yeah, I haven't really gone with the who's going to fail. We work is clearly going to fail, but maybe the brand gets taken private that the brand name itself still has some value like if you're not as long as you're not a shareholder you're probably very happy with we work it's um it's a great place to work especially if you enjoy all the free booze um and um yeah and there's, there's probably some subset of profitable leases that they own or even like newer ones that were renegotiated successfully so i think a bit of a phoenix from the flames with we work but yeah, the, the the company as it exists today is almost certainly on a dead trajectory. Oh, fascinating. Okay, that, mm -hmm. that's that's smart. Yeah. Do you dare go to the next one? What's the next question? <laughs> I don't dare. I don't <laughs> dare. <laughs> Why don't you go first? Uh, so the question is, uh, EOS Energy, which if you're a long time listener or even a recent listener of this podcast or our last podcast, you'll know has been Christoph's doom. For, for much time. Yeah, I think the proper exact term is my albatross. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the, if, if you've ever read The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner by, by Samuel <laughs> Coleridge, you'll know that, that bad things happen when, when, uh, when the albatross right. falls or whatever. So uh, it doomed me, this, this uh, beast of this beast. So, um, <clears throat> Yeah, so we had to ask uh, about EOS. So the question was, uh, the market cap of EOS today, or at least the other day when I did some research, was about $220 million. It's a pretty small, tiny cap. Um, so the question was, where will the market cap be at the end of 2024, assuming the company even still exists? So uh, I, I think they're on a waning trajectory, I'm afraid. I, I don't think they're dead and gone by the end of 2024, that's too soon. Um, but I'm, I'm going to stick a pin in the ground and say the market cap is $100 million, about half of where it is by this time next year. Interesting. I went the other way. Ooh, no doubt. And, not, and, and, and really, I really don't think this is bias anymore. <laughs> I, I, I've suffered so long. You know, the last thing I, I want is... You know, I kind of, I think I freed myself. And if you listen to the conversation with Mr. Not Advice when we did the strategic call, check that out. It was a bonus episode. Uh, I think you could hear how I think clear eyed I was about the financial distress this company is in. However, 
I continued to follow it very closely. As far as I could tell, the automatic, automated line will be installed sometime mid-year, and that is when these batteries will start getting produced. And from the market cap where it's at, where it's still being priced as though it's not going to ever make anything, the physical manufacturing of these batteries on top of some big orders coming through will push this market cap over 3x from where we are now. So I'm expecting somewhere between 750 million and a $1 billion market cap, uh, which would, for, for investors still holding on, would, would have uh, made the pain all worth it. That's if, if with a big condition, if the sky doesn't fall and everything collapses, which I think there's a good chance of that happening. So it's kind of a 50-50 situation. Great. I hope you. I hope you win that one. Uh, I don't want to see. Oh, okay. You, Thanks, so. buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so that I have some pocket change you could steal yeah. from me uh, <laughs> when we sit across one another at the tables. One of these days. That's kind of you. That's very. That's very generous. <laughs> we are. Uh... We were we were chatting about an upcoming episode and maybe meeting at a certain place in the world and having a lot of fun and doing some kind of big event. And uh, Christoph has said he's not not sure he can afford to do the big event, the marquee event, because of damn EOS. So screw that company. It could be costing me a uh, major night out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next to last category is Bitcoin. What price will it end at the end of 2023, Badger? Currently, uh, yeah. it's uh, about 43,000. 42, mm. it's bouncing between 42, 43,000. So it's had a, a, a major spike. It's been on a major bullish run as of uh, the last couple of months. The bull cycle seems to have returned. What do you think? Going uh, so, okay, I'm not a Bitcoin guy. I, I, I sort of am a crypto guy. I've got some Ethereum and some other altcoins. I'm not really a Bitcoin fan other than, you know, it's the, it's the most widely used. I don't think any of this stuff becomes, um, you know, other than in like weird places like Brazil where they have these experiments. I don't think anything like this becomes actual formal currency in, in anywhere in the world. Um, and there are some things happening with Bitcoin, but I'm just going to sit on the fence with this one. I'm going to say it's going to be exactly the same dollar number in a year's time, no movement. If we move like that, but it'll finish up in the same place. Well, this is fascinating because this is a, a segment or area where I hold pretty much the exact opposite view from Badger. I, I've been studying the space for quite some time and, and without turning this into a Bitcoin lecture, I think some of the things you just said are, um, they're, they're born from, I guess, the more pop culture understanding of it uh, rather than maybe some of the deeper fundamentals. And I, I hope to do an episode down the road where maybe we dive real deep into what is this stuff, especially because some of the stock picks I'll be making in the near future are revolve around this whole industry. But I am much, much more, I guess you could say bullish on what this is, what Bitcoin actually is and its future. And the one correction I'll offer now is it's, it doesn't have to be a currency exactly, although it could be that. It's, it's something different. I think Bitcoin is more and more on its way to replacing gold as the fundamental meaning of money. And this is where nuances get, you know, come in. Money and currencies are a different thing. And so as the network grows, what you need is, well, actually, so I'll stop, I'll, I'll pause myself there. And so I've become more and more bullish with time. And I think we're gonna see a 1X from today's prices. So I'm calling uh, something like an $80,000 level Bitcoin 365 days from today. Okay, I firmly got the under on that. Uh, I'm sorry, say that again? 
Oh, I've, uh, I've, I've firmly taken the under on that. I'm, yes. I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident we won't see a doubling in Bitcoin's market cap or um, the value, the cost of a Bitcoin. Yeah. Okay, we shall see. Yeah, this is this is one of the yeah we hold we hold completely uh, divergent views here. I can't I can't wait to uh, explain to you why why you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. I look forward to the lecture. Our final prediction of, of what you think it will be possible to do with AI. So I think the parameters here were speculate on progress in AI in 2024 and make a prediction about what it will be possible for the average person to do with AI at modest cost in a year's time? I think this is a great question to, to think through. And I was surprised by my answer. I was surprised a little bit by my answer. And I had to really reflect on my own journey with this stuff so far in its first year. So I want to tie this in with my previous answer that I think AGI will be here sooner than we think, but we don't need to get there for, for what I'm about to say to make sense. From what we already see AI being capable of today, without whatever upcoming advances we'll see unveiled throughout the year, what struck me is that it seems it is now possible for any one person as a solo entrepreneur, entrepreneur to run their business basically from bottom up without hiring all the necessary staff that used to be necessary for any kind of operation that had any kind of size that now anybody that's willing to study the tools and learn i guess about all the all the um yeah all the tools available to them that they could essentially they have an accountant they have a graphic designer in-house they have a strategic advisor, they have a CFO, they basically have, we now have everything we need. So if you have an internet connection and a little bit of, I guess you could call perseverance and grit and all those entrepreneurial characteristics, you could probably with enough diligence run a successful business without hiring anybody. So my, I mean, maybe that doesn't, I don't know, maybe that doesn't sound, sound wild and crazy. So I want to emphasize that the, that it's not that any, my, my claim is it's not that anybody could now run a business. It's that you could do it alone. Yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah. I, we're definitely seeing, um, that get chipped away at, and that's definitely true today in some respects, but still that's a long journey to get to literally running like a medium-sized enterprise as a solopreneur. So, um, yeah, that'd be interesting. That's, that's a good one. That, that offsets a lot of the doom and gloom around uh, bad things happening in the world. Uh, my, my prediction is much smaller. I feel a bit embarrassed for making it now though, compared to your grand one. Um, but I try, to, I try and be really specific. So uh, I think it'll be possible with like the latest beta versions of proper personal digital assistance on a mobile device to literally have like a fully enabled virtual PA for anybody to have that some some entity that can you know ma read your calendar, read your email, look at your messages, and then give you the base essentially a pretty comprehensive service you would get from a human PA today. So to make it specific, like if you no one loves it, but the cutting edge of uh, setting up meetings, what a tedious thing is Calendly, like no, everyone hates that because you put the onus on the other person, you send out this impersonal link to find space in your own calendar. Like the specific prediction is that um, uh, if you and I want a meeting, we'll just say that in an email and then our AIs will talk to each other if we're both on compatible platforms, which we will be. Uh, and that will just get scheduled for us with all the other stuff we need, like Zoom links or Riverside links and, and all the supporting materials and background notes for that meeting. It's crazy. It's it. I don't think uh, I've wrapped my mind around yet what's what's happening because it, it's if you I don't know if your experience was like mine, Badger, but I all year long I continued trying to follow the space and it seemed like every single week some new development that was like oh my god I can't believe that's possible now and that's possible and at some point you know there's this feeling of overwhelm and 
there's this tendency to, okay, I can't handle all, you know, so much newness all at once and not newness for these, these invent, these, these new capacities are not trivial, right? I mean, they could, in, in many ways, they, they're really altering everything. And so I can't, I really, uh, maybe one of the, a side wish for anyone listening to our podcast, maybe for ourselves is can you find, you know, let's say a week of time in your life to just learn, just kind of look back at what we could do now and kind of brainstorm, like, how could I put all of these tools to, to some good use? And I think uh, everyone would be, I mean, who, who has mastered all of these tools? They, nobody, right? I mean, this is, this is bleeding edge stuff. And it really does feel like we're back in 1999 where the visionaries were thinking, what could this internet thing do? And some people really got it right. And those people changed the world. I'm thinking obviously like Google and Amazon and whatnot, but I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to, to one year from now come across some inventions that would just mind blowing. Yeah, I did, yeah, I, I, I think I think that's true. I, I hope that's true as well. Yeah, so I took a look at the hype, Gartner hype cycle for twenty twenty three, and like a lot of the stuff you and I are talking about here is generative AI, and uh, look at where generative AI is on Gartner's hype cycle. It is at the peak, the absolute peak of the peak of overinflated expectations, mm -hmm. with Gartner's view that we won't reach plateau, you know, like true productivity with this thing for five to ten years. Um, so they clearly haven't drunk the Kool-Aid that maybe we have. Um, I don't know about you, I'm getting real utility out of these tools right now, even in researching for today's episode, but Gartner clearly think this stuff is a bit overblown. Yeah, that's the, uh, that takes me back to that linear growth versus exponential growth. And, you know, sometimes people, sometimes, uh, it is different. Most of the time it's not different. This feels like an instance where it really might be different and by what might be different, it's the rate at which the, the depth, the real stuff actually sticks. So to use the metaphor of the internet, there was that, I don't know, it's long ago enough now, but there was like this one or two year period where you had all these big ideas, but most of them went bust because the infrastructure wasn't ready, right? But the internet of course became what, what it, like the idea was not wrong, it was just early, but the computing power was not sufficient to, you know, carry it all out. We now have, we're living right in an era of GPUs. And so the rate I think of adoption will be much higher. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we're right on this one, not Gartner, but let's see. So listeners, I hope uh, this uh, 23, end of 23, beginning of 24 prediction episode filled you with some gnarly ideas of your own. And we would love it if you could hop on the X, hop on the Twitter channel, I'm sorry, hop on the YouTube channel and wherever you're finding us and maybe uh, critique something that we've said or offer one of your suggestions that we've been blind to. We would absolutely love a little bit of participation and hear back from you about what struck you as the most uh, foolhardy, most interesting, most benighted, and most overlooked. And, and if you want to make a specific, really specific prediction, um, over at Seven Investing, starting in early January, we'll be running a top stock for 2024 competition. So if you're not following Seven Investing on X, go do that and then go have your vote for your top stock for 2024. And there are prizes. Our founder, CEO, Simon Erickson, is giving away swag and value if you get the right top stock. Yes, make sure, right. And so, uh, as Badger asked politely before, please click that subscribe button. Maybe, uh, I think we're approaching 100 subscribers, right? So we're, getting we're right, getting we're, 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 yeah. we're getting there, maybe, for our hundredth subscriber, uh, we could. What could we do? We could send them. I could send them a, a, a banana. <laughs> Is that allowed? <laughs> I don't think you can export bananas without certain licenses. <laughs> we'll All send right. you a. Uh, Christoph will send you like a, a personalized video of uh, him <laughs> eating banana. <laughs> that's that's right. Or Satoshi. So anyway. <laughs> 
it, or maybe it's just uh, do it out of pride. Do it, you know, do it for that sense of well-being you would no doubt achieve becoming the hundredth subscriber. Uh, and when we're at several million, you know, two years from now, <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll officially have that OG badge to wear and, and show off proudly. For real. And hopefully if you've been following our King of the Jungle stock challenge, then, you know, hopefully it's not just your bananas that have compounded over uh, those years. If you stick with us along this long journey, because we're both battling away to try and beat each other in our one year contest. But that's just the first step on a, a, a lifetime journey of being an investor. This is both of our 20th year plus of investing for ourselves. Um, but the first time, first year doing it very publicly with a uh, public stock portfolio. So go check out wallstreetwildlife.com. You can see our top stock picks right now. And you can see who's faring best in the uh, Badger versus Monkey Challenge. Yep, check it out. And you could find us uh, on X, um, 7 Flying Platypus. And I'm at 7 Luke Hallard. And may this forthcoming year be filled with joy and peace and all kinds of blessings to everyone. For real. Are you ready to become a beast of an investor? Your journey starts here. Rawr. <laughs> A reminder that the people on this program may hold positions in the companies that are mentioned. Buying and selling stock carries financial risk, which could include loss of capital. The views in this program should not be taken as personalized advice. Before acting on any of the information provided, listeners are encouraged to consult a financial or tax professional.